Okay, so the question is, was iOS 7 created in Microsoft Word? It may sound stupid, but this video should show you that it's actually possible. If you like it, don't forget to check the whole series in the real-time speed so you can learn something new. So, let's get started. We'll start with some screenshots from the internet which we will paste into the Word and continue with this base shape for all the icons which would be this rounded rectangle. And it may be a good idea to make it in the size that it fits the grid properly so we can save some time later. Creating a calendar icon is as easy as adding two text boxes, but because we don't have a fin font like it is used for the 11 number, we have to use a simple trick and add an outline to this label so it visually looks thinner. For the messages icon, we have to set the right color gradient for the background shape. That is from the lighter green to a darker green color. We don't have a color picker, but there are some tricks how to set the right colors. The bubble is just a symbol from the font CUIUI symbols, so there is not much work here. The wearer icon is made only from three objects. The background uses our base shape, the sun is just a circle with the yellow gradient fill, and for the cloud we use a symbol from the font CUIUI symbol. We set the fill to a little bit transparent one, so the sun is a little bit visible also below the cloud. For the FaceTime icon we will reuse the same background shape as was used for the messages icon and again insert a new symbol from the font CUIY symbols. The camera is almost the same, we just have to get rid of those two circles on the top by drawing a freeform shape with the same gradient fill as is used for the background. The phone icon is probably the easiest one because we will again reuse the green background shape and just insert a phone icon and rotate it a little bit. The blue background for the mail icon is reused from the weather icon and the envelope is again a symbol but this time from the windings font. We need to change the fill for the symbol to be the same as the background so it serves as a fake mask for the underlying white rectangle. The reminders icon uses a little trick where the circles have the double white outline applied to them so the fill color also changes the outline color and creates this offsetted white outline effect. The rest are just well positioned lines. The clock icon is actually pretty easy, but it takes some time to duplicate the text box 12 times and position every number precisely. There is a cool little trick. When you drag an object with the control key pressed, you create a copy. It is much faster than using a control C and control V shortcuts. The middle part is made from lights and circles, and the hardest part here is to position everything properly. The background for the notes icon can be done in few different ways, but the less expected one will be to use a gradient fill. On the other hand, it gives us the freedom to keep the rounded rectangle shape as a base object. The rest of the icon is again made from lines, where the one on the very top is set to dotted line. For the stocks icon, we need to trace the graph line and create two separate objects. The first one will be the white line, and the second will create the subtle gradient fill or highlight below this line. To keep both objects only over the background shape, we use grid lines. All the other lines are the line shapes drawn with the shift key to keep them straight. One of them is blue and this one also contains a blue circle with the black outline. The safari icon is easier than it seems. The white rounded rectangle and blue circle are pretty clear, but for the dick marks we use a little trick. With the text box we insert a different sized lines and apply a word art transform effect to follow the circle path. That way we can easily control the size and the amount of the tick marks. The middle part is made from two triangles. The music icon you also uses the word art distort function, but this time for the note symbol. It is because the standard forms do not contain a note which is skewed this way, so we have to distort it a little. It saves us time because we don't need to draw this symbol from scratch. We will reuse the same note symbol also for the iTunes store icon. We just need to adjust the background gradient fill to match the colors perfectly and then make the note a little bit smaller and add a circle with no fill and white outline. The camera icon again uses a symbol from the fancy UIUI symbols filled with the dark grey to black gradient fill. It also has the inner shadow effect on the top and the outline in the same color as the fill to make the circle in the middle thinner. A freeform shape is again used to create gaps on the top and bottom by having the same gradient fill as the background shape. The yellow LED icon is just another circle. The photos icon is made from multiple rounded rectangle objects filled with the gradient fill from the more transparent color in the middle to the less transparent color towards the edges. That way we can see multiple semi-transparent objects in the center of the icon. To make the middle part even darker, we copy all the objects out one more time and adjust all the gradients to be darker in the middle. The background for the passbook icon is again using the gradient fill to fake three stripes of colors. The maximum number of gradient stops in Microsoft Word is 10, but we are only using 5 here. For the bottom divider, we will not use a dotted line, but a text box with the circle symbols instead. That way we can control the spacing and the position of each dot precisely. The three symbols on the left are from the fonts WebDings and CUIUI symbols. 
The game center icon is made from simple circles with the gradient fill, but we are using more free options to form a spheres out of them. With the proper settings for material and lighting, we can get almost right results. War doesn't support advanced blending modes, so in order to show the overlapping objects, we have to adjust the transparency. The video's icon is made from two parts. The background uses again a custom gradient fill to form a top black part and the bottom green to blue gradient. The top part is created separately using predefined shapes, and this group is later used as a custom fill for another rounded rectangle which acts as a clipping mask. The maps icon takes a little more time to create because it uses a lot of different shapes. We have to insert multiple rectangles and set the right fill and the outline. We also have to create the yellow road which is made from two very thick lines. Finally, all those background objects are used as a fill for a rounded rectangle. For the badge, a symbol from the WebDings font is used. It's a little bit different, so we have to set the font scaling to make it a little bit wider and fill it with the custom gradient fill to form those three stripes of colors. The arrow is again the symbol from the font. And the blue path uses the L symbol shape, so we don't have to use the two separate rectangles. Sometimes there is no appropriate symbol which we can use, so we have to draw it from the scratch. That is the case of the App Store icon, where both the pencil and the brush needs to be created from the standard shapes like the rectangles. We can, however, use a symbol for the brush tip and save some time. It is some nut symbol, but it fits the icon perfectly. The gaps around those two symbols are created with the freeform shape, with the gradient fill same as the background. It may look complicated, but we can easily tweak the cap sizes using the line width settings. The newsstand icon background uses a very subtle gradient fill to create a small shadow below the magazine covers. For the covers itself, it's mainly about drawing the rectangles, circles and triangles and setting the right fill color and no outline. For the more complicated shapes like the plane, we can use a symbol from the font. We are also using a selection pane a lot to hide what we currently don't need to see. The most complicated cover is the sports one. We create a tennis ball from the scratch and also the field made from the outlines. The settings icon uses the same trick that we have used for the Safari icon. We create a new text box, insert the triangle symbol multiple times and use a word art transfer function to follow the circle path. It's a little bit more complicated because we are using a gradient fill. We are also using an outline to make those triangles less spiky. We need to do everything twice as we have two wheels and the inner one has the gradient reversed. Finally, the inner part of the bigger wheel is made from the freeform shape, which makes defining the same gradient fill quite easy. The signal strange is just a text box with filled and outlined circles. The Wi-Fi icon needs to be made from the scratch as this icon is not in any font, but using the grid lines and the adjustable shapes makes it quite easy. We also need to draw a rule to the icon. Again, with the help of the grid lines, we can imagine that the icon is placed inside the hexagonal shape which will serve as a hover object. The berry icon is just a symbol from the font. The page separator is very similar to the signal strange, but instead of using the outline circles, we are adjusting the transparency here. The notification icon is as easy as adding the pink colored circle. There is not much what can be set out the labels except for one thing. Dragging the object with the control key pressed creates the copy, and if you drag it also with the shift key, you are moving the object in the straight line. For the background, the rectangle with orange to gray gradient fill is used. Then we add a white circle and blur it using the soft edges effect. If we duplicate it multiple times and set the different size, transparency and blurriness, we create this floating dust particles effect. The bottom part is a white semi-transparent rectangle. The iPhone 5 is made from simple objects like the rounded rectangles and circles, and use transparent fill so we can adjust the sizes and positions properly. It's also a good idea to create a separate object for the highlight, which is made from the rounded rectangle and edited using the edit points function. This shape has the semi-transparent white to transparent white gradient fill. The camera and the speaker shares the same fill and the outline which is lighter on the bottom to form a highlight. The home button also uses the gradient fill to form a strong highlight and the gradient outline so we can have a smaller highlight on the top and bigger on the bottom. Then we group everything together and duplicate it on the next page. As a 3D base for our phone, we rotate the rounded rectangle into 3D space, add some depth from the bevels and adjust the material and lighting settings. Then we rotate our group in the same way to fit the front side of our phone. We also added the up shadow using the freeform shape with the black to grey gradient fill, which is blurred using the soft edges functions. Then we change the background and that's it. If you like this video and want to learn something new, don't forget to check my new free ebook 7 best text effects in Microsoft Word, which you can read online for free on iShoe. So read the book, learn something new and have fun. Thank you.